Hello everyone, I'm Sean E, and in today's video I'm going to give you an introduction to sets and introduce you to some of the important terms you're going to need to know when talking about sets. So let's define what a set is first. A set is an unordered collection of distinct objects. And there's three keywords there. That's unordered, distinct, and objects. So before we talk about these keywords, let's write out a simple set. You can start a set with this open bracket sign, and we're going to put three objects in the set. One, two, and three, and then close the set with a close bracket sign. Now the objects in the set are referred to as elements, so one, two, and three are elements of the set. And how would you write that in math terms? Well, first you need to name the set, and sets are generally named with capital letters. It's not a rule you have to follow, but it's generally considered good form. So we're going to name this set Big A. And Big is uh, an easy way to refer to capital letters, Big A, Little A, a lot easier than uh, uppercase and lowercase. So to write that one, two, and or three are elements of A, you use this little symbol here, which kind of looks like an E. So that's one is an element of A, two is an element of A, and three is an element of A. More conveniently, you could just write one, two, three elements of A. Now let's talk about these three keywords. Now the first one is unordered, and what does that mean? Well, suppose we have another set, set B, which equals the set that contains three, two, and one. B is equal to A because B and A all have the same elements, one, two, three, and one, two, three. And it doesn't matter that B has them in the opposite order, and naturally, that's what unordered means. Now let's talk about the next keyword, distinct. Now what does that mean? Well, suppose we have another set, let's call this set C, and C is going to equal um, the set which contains the numbers that we get from four dice rolls. So we're going to roll a dice four times and whatever numbers we get are going to form our set C. So let's suppose we roll a one, then we roll a two, and then we roll a three, and then we roll a one. So what's going to be in set C? Well first there's going to be one, then we're gonna have two, and then we're gonna have three. And that's it, because uh, only distinct elements go in the set. So you don't have to include that one an additional time. Um, so C is equal to the set that contains one, two, three. Therefore, we can say that C equals A, which is equal to B, because they all have one, two, three, and nothing more in them. Now, the last keyword I mentioned was objects. So what's the importance of that word? Well, that's important because a set doesn't have to contain just numbers. It can contain anything you please. So the set could contain Pringle flavors, the set could contain breeds of dogs, or uh, anything you like. So suppose we have another set, set D, and that is equal to circle, heart, and triangle. Well, we know that set D is not equal to set A, because A has one, two, and three, and D has circle, heart, triangle, so they don't have any elements in common. However, they do have one thing in common, and that thing is their cardinality. Cardinality is the number of sets, or excuse me, the number of elements that are in a set, and to write that, you use absolute value symbols, basically. So the cardinality of A is equal to three, because A has one, two, and three in it. Cardinality B is also equal to three because B has three, two, and one in it. Same thing with C has one, two, and three in it. We're gonna go straight to D. Cardinality of D is also equal to three because D just has circle, heart, and triangle in it. So A, B, and D all have the same cardinality. The last thing we're gonna talk about is subsets. 
So suppose we have another set and we're gonna call this set E and E is equal to the set one, two. We can say that E is a subset of A with this symbol here, a C with a line under it, and that means that all of the elements in E, one and two, are also in A. Now A does have three, which E doesn't have, and that means that A is not an element of E because all of the elements in A are not in E, but all of the elements in E are in A, so E is a subset of A. There are two symbols you can use for subset, and they mean slightly different things, but I'll talk about that in another video. Link in the description if you want to see that, along with other related videos. So that's it for the introduction to sets. I hope you guys found it helpful. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions about sets or would like to know more, um, please let me know in the comments. I would be happy to do um, any specific requests that you guys have. Hopefully you found it helpful, and I will see you next time. Be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. Thanks for watching.